So the next topic on this one is uh, Blizzard and the Hearthstone patch, eleven point two debacle. Oh boy! Yeah, that's that's kind of the general feeling going into this one. Um, basically, the summary of this is Blizzard made some uh, fixes to certain cards in the game on how they worked and interact with everything. And the result have um, the result is that decks have been rendered unplayable, and uh, this couldn't be uh, this. They couldn't have made worse timing on this. Actually, I mean, they probably could have if they tried, but let's let's not encourage them. Uh, <laughs> so there were some good things in the patch. Let's talk about those first. That's that's good. Let's start with the good stuff. Uh, they announced the new Taverns of Time special event, which is going to run from June the 11th through July the 2nd. Uh, it's going to be a special arena matchup where you can earn special daily quests and rewards of gold and dust. Uh, they also announced a new Get In Here bundle, which uh, gives you 10 packs of cards for $7.99 and includes oh, two each uh, from the classic set. The, new, the newest set, which is the Witchwood, and the other three sets that are currently in the standard rotation, Kobolds and Catacombs, Knights of the Frozen Throne, and the Journey to Ungoro. That sounds like a pretty good deal. That's, uh, if, if I'm actually doing my math correctly, that's less than a dollar a pack, isn't it? That's about 80 cents a pack, which is, the only time you're going to get a deal better than that from Hearthstone is if you pre-order one of the expansions. <laughs> That's that's pretty nice, actually. And uh, unlike other bundles, you can actually purchase this bundle multiple times. At least until June 19th. Yep, until 10 a.m. on June 19th. Uh, also, they're going to be giving out a free Golden Classic pack to everyone who logs into Hearthstone on June the 13th. I need to remember to do that. That's about the only time I log into my art zone and when they give out free stuff. <laughs> as yeah. much as I just, it's just everyone's so much better than me at the game. It's just like, I don't want to lose. I just want cards. <laughs> yeah. CCGs and RTSs are just not my thing. I try them very often, but it's just... But that, that, uh, that bundle sounds very interesting. I might mm -hmm. check that out. Try you give me the Magic the Gathering... I will play the heck out of that. I love that. I've been playing that for what, almost 15 years at this point. Like, I'm sold on that. Hearthstone, I just haven't quite gotten there with it. I'm the same way. I played um, Magic the Gathering for several years, and I tried out Hearthstone. I just can't get into it also. Uh, I understand that. Uh, but stay tuned. Uh we're going to be talking a little bit about Brian Kibler and his reaction to all this. So the King of Dragons had something to say here. Ah, uh, yes, a name I'm quite familiar with. So uh, unfortunately, all that stuff we just mentioned is pretty much all the good that was in this particular patch. Oh, man. Brace yourselves, everyone. <laughs> so um, <laughs> there were a number of cards that had the way they interacted or had the way they were they their play worked in the game changed and they were filed under bug fixes but really if we're being honest these were nerfs under a different name um there were three there was several cards affected but there were three in particular that stood out um the first was Tess Greymane, and this was the one that uh, the community generally considered the most egregious. Um, so I know none of you play Hearthstone, but there was a card in the Wrath of the Old Gods expansion called yogg Saron Hope's End. And Yogg... I'm like a demon. Well, Yogg is the old god of despair. Oh. Um, think Cthulhu-ish. Okay. Uh, but Yogg-Saron had the effect that when he was played, he would play a random spell for every spell played throughout the game. 
wow, okay, that could get uh, disgusting pretty quickly. And so, in the original version, Yogg would play as many spells as had been played. And also, even if he was destroyed or something happened, he was silenced or you know, otherwise would have had his effect canceled, his effect would continue until it completed. Well, then Blizzard decided that was not fun and interactive, so they nerfed him. And they nerfed Yogg-Saron by limiting it to a maximum of 30 total cards could be played, which wasn't that big a deal, because to play 30 spells in a single game, unless you're running something really long, fatigue, attrition deck, you're not going to do that. That sounds pretty reasonable, yeah. The one that got most people's ires up was with Yog saron was that uh, they changed the mechanic where if he was destroyed, for example, if he cast a fireball at himself and killed himself in one turn or after a single spell, then he would stop and the effect would end. It wouldn't do the rest of the effects, hmm. which made... Yogg-Saron way less powerful and broke a lot of the decks that used him. Well, they basically went and did the same thing to Tess Greymane. Uh, Tess Greymane is a rogue class card that when you play it, it plays a copy of every card you've played from your opponent's class. Ooh. So Rogue has a mechanic where it can steal cards from the opponent or steal copies of cards from the opponent and then allows you to play those cards yourself uh, as a class in Hearthstone. Uh, Very fun mechanic, actually. <laughs> and so Tess basically takes that and gives it the og -Saron treatment where it will play each of the cards with potentially random targets that you've played out of your opponent's class. Well, Tess, as she was originally released, worked the same way the old version of yogg saron did. There wasn't any upper limit, and it would continue to play the effects even if she was destroyed. Well, they basically went and nerfed her the same way they nerfed yogg saron where, according to the latest patch notes, Tess Greymane uh, is now limited to 30 cards and will stop if she is silenced, killed, transformed, leaves the battlefield, or if any hero dies. Huh. Uh, and they also changed it to where uh, her replay would also replay hero cards from another class. Uh, hero cards were something that were added in the Knights of the Frozen Throne expansion where it would give your, your, your hero... Uh, basically your avatar in the game, uh, armor, increase their life total, and also change their hero power. And so it, previously, Tess Greymane wouldn't replay those cards, and now she will. So that was the good change they made. The other one, they limited Tess Greymane and nerfed her in this way, the same way they did yogg Saron, but they didn't offer... Usually when Blizzard nerfs cards, they will offer an opportunity for you to dust them. Uh, you can take a card in Hearthstone and you can turn it into Arcane Dust equal to one quarter of its value. Well, whenever a card gets nerfed in Hearthstone, the dev team will usually tell everyone and allow people to get the full dust value of any changed cards. Well, they didn't do that with Tess Greymane. They didn't do it with the other two cards that were nerfed here. Uh, Lanessa Sunsorrow, which is a uh, Paladin Legendary card. Uh, Lanessa Sunsorrow is a card that reads, uh, has a similar effect to Tess Greymane, only it says, uh, and what is the exact text on Lanessa? I should have this prepared. <laughs> uh, it has the text battle cry, which means that when you play this card, yeah. cast each spell you cast on your minions in this game on this one. So uh, it 
was part of a uh, Lynessa is basically the top end card in a deck called Buff Paladin, where you play a bunch of buff spells on your minions, and then at the end of the game you play Lynessa, and every single buff spell that you've played in that game gets played on her. And she becomes huge. Pretty much. Now, Lanessa is a 7-mana 1-1. One, one. one attack, one health. But when you play her, all your buff cards get put on her. So she can get all kinds of crazy effects, like plus 1, plus 2, plus 5, plus 5. Uh, can gain taunt, yeah. lifesteal, divine shield. Basically all kinds it's of... Like builds her own legend, basically. Pretty much. That's the idea with Lanessa. And so now, uh, Lanessa Sun Sorrow has received also the Yogg-Saron treatment. She is now limited to 30 cards. And a key thing that changed the way Lanessa works, those cards, the buffs will now be cast in a random order. So previously, Lanessa cast the buffs in the same order that you played them. Okay, I can see how that would make a big difference. Uh, are there um, buffs that... Um, how should I word this? Are there a type of buff that actually makes it so that the creature is um, not able to be targeted after you play it? There are some. Um, uh, that's using the adapt mechanic, though. And it can sometimes be that sometimes issue, but the bigger one is uh, what are the popular cards to run in Buff Paladin? Well, in certain forms of Buff Paladin, is a card called Dino Size. And what Dino mm -hmm. Size does is when you play it, it says, uh, you know, make this minion a 10 10. Ah. Uh, so so if, you, if you play Dino Size in your Buff Paladin deck, and you play Lanessa, and it plays them in a random order. So if it was the last one played, it could reset all your stuff back to ten. Pretty much. Uh, so instead that's... of having your, you know, instead of having like your fifteen twenty five Lanessa, you wind up with a ten ten. That's lame. And see, that's why the random order bit, changing it from the order it was played to a random order. Mm -hmm affects the way certain deck archetypes with her work. Or literally, it breaks them. Yeah. You, you mean you couldn't rely on it with that card still in the deck list? Yeah, basically you wind up having to cut dino size and rely on other buff cards instead. Yeah. Do you think that Blizzard would change that if enough people reacted negatively to it? Well, that's a good point. Um, the Play Hearthstone account did put out something a little while ago about Tess Greymane, said we've, we've seen a lot of the feedback about Tess Greymane. We understand that a lot of the community is not happy with it. And we're going to review this change and see if it's something that we want to, you know, maybe something we want to reconsider. Well, at least they're thinking about it. Yeah, but I'm not hopeful because of yeah. the other thing we're going to talk about. <laughs> well, one quick thought of that is it's bad for the player using Tess Greymane and uh, Lanessa, but it's having the random order is bad for the person playing those cards, but it's good for the person um, facing that player because then they can kind of figure out how to defeat the uh, buffed up character or randomly buffed up character. But I can definitely see a lot of people would be up in arms with the card and to make the players happy, they would probably change it in a way that maybe balances it um, or, or just reverses what they did. I, like I said, I'm not a Hearthstone player, so I'm just trying to figure out if they would, if they like to balance the cards uh, for everybody, because it could give the person who plays those two cards or one card or whatever, so much power in the game that it's just unstoppable. If that's why, that's why I imagine they did the randomize effects. 
But I think the reason the community is so up in arms about it is because Lanessa Sunsaro has worked that way ever since she was released back in December. Mm. You know, this card has literally been functioning a particular way for over six months. It's like an eternity in this format. Yeah, when the standard format rotation is a two-year rotation format, six months, it's operated a particular way for one quarter of its time in standard. Yeah. And, and that leads to the other part. Mm -hmm. So we talked about how some of the way the game mechanics have changed uh, have affected some of the deck archetypes. In particular, one that was hit particularly hard was a deck type called Quest Druid, or Jungle Giants Druid. Yes. Um, so Jungle, Giant, it, Jungle Giants is a card that came out in the Journey to Angoro set. And it was one of the class quest cards. Uh, every class in Hearthstone got a quest, which was basically a little... I don't want to say mini win condition, but it was, it gave you a condition to play toward. Uh, for example, with Jungle Giants, there were a certain set number of five attack or greater minions you had to play before you completed the quest. Uh, pull that up real quick. So, yes, Jungle Giants. Giants, the quest is summon five minions with five or more attack. And so uh, when you complete the quest, you then receive the reward, which is Barnabas. Uh, Barnabas the Stomper is a five mana 8-8 eight, eight, with the battle cry, reduce the cost of minions in your deck to zero. And so uh, Quest Druid isn't a super competitive deck, but it has seen some fringe use as a, a counter cue in the tournament scene. Because in certain variants, there were ways to accelerate that quest to the point where you could start getting your 8, 9, and 10 mana minions out for free as soon as turn 5 or 6. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, getting your getting big things faster is a generally well accepted uh, deck type in a lot of uh, uh, card games, not just the Hearthstone. So I mean, so I can understand how uh, something like this could just make it stop working because suddenly, like, instead of going off at like point A, you're suddenly going off at point B instead, and against a lot of decks, that could be way too late. And, uh, well, to give you all a point of reference, since you all are more familiar with Magic the Gathering, yes. playing Druid is a lot like playing Green in Magic yeah. the Gathering. Uh, okay. okay. Um, uh, mana acceleration is a thing in Druid. Uh, Basically, uh, being able to... The other thing with uh, Druid is the choose one mechanic, where for a given card, you can choose one form or another for a card. Um, yeah. And so, one of the things that Quest Druid they did was they ran a card called Faceless Manipulator. Uh, Faceless Manipulator is a classic set card that when you play the card, uh, it has a battle cry that lets it copy another minion on the board. So, for example, if you had a five attack minion on the board, you could play Faceless Manipulator, copy the other minion, and that would help you accelerate the quest because it allow you to get more five mana minions out more quickly. Well, in this patch, one of the game mechanics updates they made was that summon and play triggers are now evaluated using their in-hand stats before they are affected by board modifiers and their battle cry. And in particular, they point out 
Playing Faceless Manipulator targeting a five attack minion will no longer advance the Druid quest Jungle Giants, as it would be considered a 3 3. Because when it's in your hand, Faceless Manipulator is a 3 3. Okay. Fun ruined. <laughs> They also made a change where minions that enter the battlefield without being played from hand will have any summon triggers evaluated before bo board modifiers are applied. Um, one of the examples they used, there are there's a, a five mana four four card, Azure Drake. Uh, Azure Drake is a four four, and there's another card called Direwolf Alpha, which is a two mana. 1-1, one, one, I believe, that says that adjacent minions to it gain plus one, plus one. Well, yeah. uh, previously, if you pulled, if you used a card to pull Azure Drake from your hand, and it's summoned beside Direwolf Alpha, well, the board modifier would make it a 5-4, and thus it would advance the Jungle Giants quest. And it counted as a five attack minion. Well, they've changed that now to where Azure Drake would still be a four four when it was evaluated, and so it would not advance the quest. Which to me that's a fair change. The other one though really broke the way a lot of druid players played their quest druid. Um, and in particular, it's already causing problems on the pro player circuit, particularly with the Hearthstone Championship Tour tournament in Korea this weekend. Yes. So basically, what's going on there is, since the changes were made effectively right before this tournament, players were already had their deck list submitted, and... They wanted to change their deck to use something that wasn't broken anymore. But basically what the tournament committee said is that, no, you're locked into your choice and you, you have to keep using it as is. So what this does is anyone playing a deck archetype that's been affected by this bug fix is going to be forced to play with a lesser effective deck, whereas people who are running lists that weren't affected by these are going to have a big advantage and that's going to skew all of the results and effectively give certain players advantages over the others. Yeah. Um, Frank Zhang, who games under the name frozen and is well known in the Hearthstone community. Uh, he put up a tweet yesterday that says, anyone know what happens to the people who submitted quest Druid for seal asking for a friend? <laughs> So yes, he submitted Quest Druid in his submission list for HCT Seal or HCT Korea, mm -hmm. and he asked for a response. And the response, uh, the letter said, uh, "This is the HCT Seal organizer. We requested Blizzard Esports for a decision on regarding the latest Hearthstone patch, 11.2.0.24769." which was applied on June 6th, Korea time, as the DEX list submission for HCTCL was already complete. We announced Blizzard's decision as below. HCTCL will proceed with the latest patch version without deck modification procedures, apologize for not informing about the schedule in advance, and ask for players' understanding. According to this decision, HCTCL will be proceeding based on the deck that was submitted and be competing in the latest patch version. Good luck to all players. In other words, this is the version, this is the nice organizer version of Blizzard tells you to go pound sand. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I think not really having any kind of cut in, in this discussion because I don't really understand most of it. I don't under, I understood some terms, uh, <laughs> but I, I, the tournament is either going to be very interesting to watch or very boring is what it sounds like. That's a pretty fair assessment, I'd say. Well, the community reaction has been, um, to say at the very least, rather intemperate. <laughs> Volcanic, even. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I don't I don't follow a lot of those outlets on Facebook or YouTube, and I'm I'm still seeing and hearing things about it. Um, yeah. the the Hearthstone Reddit when the decision was published, the post about it currently has 516 comments. Nice. And has been yeah. upvoted 2.1 thousand times. That's well, that's quite a few. <laughs> um. Basically, uh, let's put it this way. When the King of Dragons himself, Brian Kibler, steps in and says, if this email is accurate, it's entirely unacceptable. You done goofed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he went on to say, fundamentally changing how decks function between deck submission and the tournament with no warning, and then not allowing players to make any changes undermines the event's integrity and wastes those players' time and money. If I were to prepare for and travel to a tournament and then be told that one of my decks just doesn't work anymore because of a patch and that I was stuck with it, I don't know that I'd ever play in a tournament again. Now, this is Brian, King of Dragons, Kibler himself. Yeah. Yeah. To put this in perspective, the reason why um, he is important is he has been in the collectible card game scene for many years. Before he was a a big champion in Magic the Gathering, and has since um, moved on to Hearthstone, and basically anybody who, just about everybody who's played card games for years knows who this guy is. So he is a very skilled player in in both areas, and if he says something like this, other players are going to listen. Yeah, yeah. and. And, and it, I know I watch Kibler stream on Twitch quite often, and I was aware of him back when I played Magic in my high school days. But, I mean, he is not one to easily be rattled or to get angry about something. And for him to be this incensed about something indicates that something has gone terribly and horribly wrong. Mm. Quick side note here. I have this card that I got like years ago when they actually played um put you know pro players um um pictures and stuff on cards in magic packs. Very so, nice. That's cool. I just happened to have that sitting there because I was planning on using it to make a uh, some sort of token at some point. It's just one of my many side projects that just hasn't gone anywhere. But just a random thing there. He doesn't quite look that way anymore, I guess. But yeah, <laughs> he hasn't changed that much. If you've seen him recently, no, I mean in appearance, yeah. But I don't know if he still does the whole finger gun thing still. You know, uh, like, hey, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he does. <laughs> oh, he does. <laughs> he, well, okay. he doesn't do it often, but he does do it on stream from time to time. <laughs> well, that's good to know. I mean. The spirit's still the same. So, yeah. So Blizzard has some decisions they really need to make here because they... Uh, they goofed up. They goofed, yeah. I mean, it doesn't take much these days for uh, players to abandon you know, certain games for, I don't know, maybe even less. Oh, um, yeah egregious offenses than this yeah so i would i would say they are probably going to have to come up with some way to make it up to the, the players if they want this thing to still be a thing i feel like there's going to be a lot of damage control for a while mm -hmm. like I, I don't think it's going to be i feel like even if doubtful but even if they were to go in reverse uh the major changes that they made which it seems like is as most of the changes that they made, it probably still wouldn't be enough for a lot of people. It seems like. Okay, mm. so I do have a little bit of an update here because this just came down in the last hour or so. Ooh, hotness. Go ahead. Uh, so Hearthstone, uh, the Play Hearthstone Twitter account uh, submitted an update about Patch 11.2. And they said, 
Uh, thank you for your feedback regarding the recent update 11.2. We apologize for not offering notice in advance of these changes before they went live. We understand there wasn't a good, this wasn't a good experience and that it was also an impact on some of our eSport competitors, so on and so forth. Anyway, uh, what they said was, after hearing your feedback to that change, we initially considered a full Arcane Dust refund for tests, and we also read feedback from players who use tests in their decks, asking for it to be reverted. In this case, we agree that it's worthwhile to sacrifice some consistency so Tess is more fun to play, especially since our priority wasn't to decrease Tess's power level. With that in mind, instead of offering an Arcane Dust refund, we're reverting one of the changes to Tess Greymane so that her battle cry will continue, even if she's destroyed, silenced, or otherwise removed from the board. So okay. they're reverting that part. That was the egregious part, in my opinion. Hmm. I'm okay with that. Okay, that's a step in the right direction for sure. Yeah. Uh, so they're currently planning to revert the change that caused Tess Greymane to stop casting her battle cry when destroyed, silenced, or otherwise removed on June 8th. So they are reverting that in the next day or so. And nice. regarding HCT Seal, uh, they wanted to apologize for the impact on the tour stop. Uh, specifically, to the, turns out there was 15 players who had submitted Quest Druid as a deck. That's significant. Uh, they felt that given the recent feedback that Quest Druid in particular was directly affected in terms of its viability. And so they are going to allow players that brought Quest Druid an opportunity to resubmit their deck. Another step in the right direction. Are you saying Quest Druid was the one that was the most affected by this? Yes. Okay. Well, then I guess that makes sense. Um, do you see other players, that, you know, that weren't running Quest Druid being upset that they didn't get to change it, or do you think that it'll balance out because theirs weren't as badly wrecked as the Quest Druid deck? I mean, I think it's fair because the. I mean, the fact that in their own official patch note, they specifically call out Quest Druid as being most affected by these changes indicates that they knew it was going to hurt this particular deck archetype. Hmm. And yet they did it anyway. Yeah. And what's the lesson we learn here today, kids? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like... I, I Actually, I want to ask, I guess, uh, you guys... Would would it have made a difference at all uh, in terms of how the community reacted to it if they had announced the changes ahead of time and then also pushed the update back uh, past the tournament, like oh. uh, sometime after, like sometime later? So here's the really crazy yeah. thing about all this: they did exactly that for the last round of balance updates. Mm -hmm. Oh, they and they. Had they announced uh -huh. uh, when they there were a set of cards that they nerfed uh, in patch 11.0 and 11.1. Uh, several of them were critical to the way particular decks functioned. Um, in particular, Even Paladin was a big deck, and it used for its power turns a card called Call, Call to Arms that was four mana. Uh, they decided to up its cost to five mana. Which, of course, means that in an even deck, which can only use 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 mm -hmm. cost cards, you couldn't run that in that deck yeah. anymore. Right. And there were several other uh, cards that got nerfed or balanced. And they announced it ahead of time, and they were going to have a tournament. And so they postponed the changes a whole month to make sure that it would not affect the consistency of the tournament. It's the fact that they'd done this previously and they didn't do it in this case is the thing that mystifies me. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming this this change, these changes, this update is uh, a little bit of a bigger, uh, I guess, change than the previous one. Like it's it's more. No, it's actually a far smaller one. There's far fewer oh. cards affected. It's the way they presented, I think, that stirred the ire of the community. They effectively nerfed a set of about three to six cards. And they didn't claim they were nerfs. They claimed they were consistency or bug fixes. And so 
the community wouldn't be getting the dust from those uh, because they weren't be calling they weren't being presented as nerfs they were being presented as game fixes okay that's starting to make a lot more sense in that area because basically that would make this change more cost effective to blizzard pretty would much yeah and now just as a parallel to this um wizards of the coast you know the, the makers of magic the gathering whenever they make changes to the game like bannings and whatnot they will always wait to implement them until after uh their big um, events so whether it is whether it's to actually um, watch all the games as they pass to see exactly how it affects the uh, the gameplay, or whether it's to keep uh, you know deck lists from you know having to be changed at the last minute because some of these decks are ungodly expensive. They will always make sure it's after those to get basically make it as little of waves as they can. And I think that actually helps keep people from, you know, getting to unreasonable levels of rage because of what they did to their game. And because I think with as many mistakes as Wizards of the Coast has made, there are certain ones that they know not to make. Yeah. I think if, if Blizzard wants to continue to have a healthy community, they need to do similar things. And you know, there. Blizzard had announced at the beginning of this year, uh, Team Five, the team that's focused on Hearthstone, had announced at the beginning of this year that they were wanting to focus specifically on making Hearthstone better from an esports perspective. And so, hmm. pulling something like this is really shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, see, and I thought like just losing to my friends was rough. In this game, <laughs> um, getting completely knocked out of a tournament is, would be so much worse. Because you have to pay, you have to pay to get into those things, don't you? Yeah. Plus, you had to pay, cover the cost of your own travel, your own hotel. And yeah, if you win, you'll probably win back more than you spent. But if you don't win, then you're just out all that money. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, man, I'm glad I'm not a competitive player. I know uh, Darman is pretty competitive in certain respects, but more power to him. I'd rather just mess around, you know, playing with friends. So that way, the worst thing that happens is I'll get irritated that my deck didn't go off like I wanted to, and then I'll be over in a few minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I, I feel like I'd be the same way. I mean, like I said, not really into those kind of games, but it, I can feel the frustration. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll just stick with Commander. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you all are ever interested in Hearthstone, I happen to... Uh, I have a number of budget decks that you all could try and would probably be able to craft for relatively cheap. Hmm. You know, I still have Hearthstone installed. Um, I might actually try to play like the next time we have an event or something. It's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, I'll pick this up again, try it again. And, you know, but it just doesn't materialize because I'm, I've already got my hand in so many other things. Yeah. And. But peer pressure is a thing. <laughs> that and uh, one of my main complaints with Hearthstone is unless you're willing to invest money into the game, the learning curve is brutal. I feel that pain. <laughs> of course, I, I said much the same thing about Magic the Gathering when I played about 10 years ago. So, Well, it's only as brutal as, as you know, you allow it to be. So I mostly spend like $5 or less on cards. And since I play a singleton format, which means, you know, single copies of cards, that actually can help with the price a lot. Like I built a 100-card deck for... Like after adding it up, maybe about twenty dollars, which is actually really good for a commander deck. 
since how several of mine are uh, upwards of like two hundred dollars or so. Mm. So making one for that amount is quite nice. I'm a big fan of budget decks, so. Maybe one of these days I will actually take you up on that and see if I can actually get somewhere in one of these community events. Mm. Yeah, you right now it would be a good time to log in because you'll get a you get a free Witchwood legendary if you've not logged in since the Witchwood expansion came out. So you'll get a free mm-hmm. legendary card and <laughs> That that can be useful in building some of the more interesting deck archetypes. Okay, good deal. All right. Um, uh, real quick, yes. is it okay if I? I just want to say this is unrelated to Hearthstone and and those kind of games in general. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know why E three is still a thing. Uh, two more things just got announced <laughs> um, today. <laughs> there was uh, Days Gone has a release date now. Um, which is, I believe, February 22nd of next year. Oh. Um, and then they just announced Hitman with Crackdown, right? Pro- yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, and then the next one is uh, Hitman 2 has been announced. Um, two? Warner Bros. Interactive and IO. Wait. Yeah, I guess I guess a sequel to the, um, the reboot that they made. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. It was said to be uh, uh, episodic releases. Okay. Um, this one, I don't know. There's not really a lot of info. I'm assuming we will get more info at E3, but it just seems weird that they're like, hey, guys, here's all this stuff <laughs> before E3. <laughs> well, I don't know if they're just trying to fight the leaks or if they, uh, they, they've they just kind of given up because I know I think it's PAX. Uh, it's PAX East or, or the main PAX event is is where a lot of things get announced now. But all right, Nand, you were saying something. Uh, I was going yeah. to say the choice of calling it Hitman Two is really weird, considering that Hitman Two Blood Money already exists. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's a lot of games that do that too, and it's it's weird. Yeah. Of course. Then again, we had Battlefield One, and now we're going to have Battlefield Five. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, they kind of looked at it and they're like, oh, maybe we shouldn't have done that. And then <laughs> they went back for it. And now people, especially uh, people newer to the series, they're like, I'm going to go back and play the first one just in case I need to <laughs> refresh. And it's like, oh, Good luck, pal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's the Battlefield one came out. What was it last year or, or two years ago? And then the actual first one is 1942 from early 2000. Yeah. yeah. So it's. I mean, not that that actually matters, but people who don't know, it, it's it just it's a big it throws yeah. people off. Mm-hmm. Same thing with I know Doom, and uh, I don't know if Unreal Tournament's going to do that or or just Wolf and Sign. I guess that they they did give it a subtitle and, and separated it from the first one, but right, that's just funny that that game companies are are doing that for uh, what seems like almost no reason really. Uh, other than not being able to come up with a, a good subtitle, I guess. Right. Well, I think we're probably at the point where we're going to start wrapping this up. Um, I will say that um, if the two things that Sam just talked about um, is pulling from the next episode of the podcast, then Patrick might just have to uh, edit that part out. Um nope. And then I'll probably be fired from hosting ever again because I let it happen. But nope, that's a, I'll take I'll take blame. But at any rate, who cares? Let's go on to the next segment. <laughs> um, I'm gonna bring up our merch store real quick. Um, you can get you know, t-shirts, hats, sweatshirts, mugs, things of that nature to have our uh, Crossforge logo, and some of them actually have. Um, stylized uh, portraits of our three founders uh you know patrick bones and darman so if that's more your thing if you want their faces uh, spread across your chest you can uh, go and get those um you'll find a link to that site in the description of this and uh buy your stuff it's great stuff 
<laughs> really quick, can we just can can we call them founding dads? Founding dads? Yeah. Founding dads. <laughs> that sounds like a whole new like design idea that somebody should get on. Should, we should get dads. their faces in like a Mount Rushmore style. Oh, and yes, and we need to release it like around Independence Day. <laughs> uh, I like the way you think, man. We are coming up with new ideas on the podcast. You heard it here first, and without any of the big three presents. <laughs> we <are telling. laughs> uh, we're just honestly, we should tell like don't watch this, don't watch this podcast, and then just out of nowhere start calling them the founding dads. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Uh, oh, this is me, great. Patrick Darman, when you watch this, please don't fire us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> please, I would like to stay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, 